money in circulation, works for works for counterfeiters in action. Get your pipers, get your pipers, works for. Attention, attention, dinero falso in circulation, dinero falso in circulation. Attention à los billetes de 20 dollars américains. Avis important, avis important. Faites attention aux faux billets de banque étrangers. La préfecture annonce que de nombreux faux billets de 20 dollars et de 5 livres anglaises ont été circulés à Paris. Would you like coffee tea? I'm sorry. You can have your choice of coffee, tea or water. Merci beaucoup, mais non. Il n'y a pas de quoi. Coffee? Would you like some coffee, please? No, but I have one of these little brown things, if you don't mind. All right. Thank you. Have a cigarette. No, thank you. How about a little gin? I'm not thirsty, thank you. No, no, gin rummy. Cards. Oh, I don't know how to play that. Oh. I'll be glad to teach you. Shall we play for, say, a penny a point, just to make it interesting? Oh, what can I lose? So far, 11,750 points. seem to be able to draw the right cards. It's the name of the game, Jen. There's 17 points left. And uh, 25 for Jen makes 42. Puts me out, you're blessed again. How much do I owe you? Let's see, 12,208, well, I'll call it 12,000. $120. Is that right? You wholesale high quality etchings at a large discount. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. I want to be your European distributor. But you've got the wrong man. You're Philip Gray, can't you? Yeah. Then I'm talking to the right man. We'll be arriving in Los Angeles in 20 minutes. We'll settle this later. Want you to meet some friends of mine? Here they come now. Hello, Phil. Hello, Margot. Hiya, Lou. What's new? Hey, who's the guy? Oh, uh, Margot? Oh, yeah. By the way, what is your name? Uh, Jeff. Piccadilly Jeff. Oh, Piccadilly. Oh, what kind of... Say, that's a funny name. Why do they call you that? Oh, they call me Piccadilly because I come from Liverpool. Oh. <laughs> uh, Jeff's riding into town with us, if you don't mind, Margot. Oh, not at all. It's a pleasure. Thank you. That uh, cabbage, where'd you get it? From a friend of yours in Paris, Fontaine. When? Must have been last Tuesday. Tuesday? Mm -hmm. You sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Well, I'm not. You two-bit chiseler. Turn right at the next road, Margot. Put that gun away, it might go off. What are you getting so excited for, Drake? I don't like liars. No, I think he's a cop. No, if he was a cop, he'd know Fontaine was out of circulation last Tuesday. The French police picked him up a week ago Sunday. Get out. When I start talking, where'd you get that dough? I told you, from Fontaine. I must have made a mistake in the day. You made a mistake, all right. Phil, Phil, stop! Get back in the car. No! 
If you do, I'm through with you, understand? Murder is out. She's got an envelope filled with our dough. Get it. Yeah. What do you think of these 20s? Hmm, beautiful specimens. Same merchandise, where'd these show? The racetrack yesterday. That's funny, these were in a bank deposit made by a Hollywood hospital. Hmm. That's a strange combination, a racetrack and a hospital. Simple, guy lost 200 bucks to the track, cut his throat. <laughs> Washington's been on the lookout for these for years. They're off the Malloy plates. You mean the Malloy that was killed in New York in 1940? Yeah. We got him and most of his gang, but we didn't get the plates for this counterfeit. Somebody grabbed them, put them in cold storage. Hmm. Now they're printing again. Yeah. Sure would fool me. And a lot of people, especially in foreign countries where they're clamoring for American currency. Take a look at this TWX, Chief. Hmm. Worse than I thought. These bills are appearing in every important money center in Europe. The only place they've showed up in this country is right here in Los Angeles. Washington's transferring 25 men from other branch offices to help us locate these plates. In the meantime, let's track these down. Well, they got by with it at the track yesterday. Maybe they'll try it again today. Sounds logical. You better go with him, Piper. Oh, and hit the hospital on your way, Tony. Right. Oh, Dan. Mm -hmm. uh, any hot tips on the races today? Yeah. Only suckers bet on horses. Yeah, yeah I know that, but anything else? Yeah. Put 20 on Skyrocket's nose in the fifth. Skyrocket? <laughs> hmm, I hope it's better than it was yesterday. What's the matter? You unhappy because I'm getting well? I shouldn't tell you this, but I'm worried. You're in trouble. <laughs> no, honey, I paid my bill, didn't I? Yeah, it was phony dough. Tony! Why, you wolf in endless clothing. How are you, Jeff? Good to see you. I'll take care of him, nurse. Uh, what are you doing here? I thought you were at New York homicide. Why, in America, a good man moves upwards. I am now a tea man. You a tea man? Who took your exams for you? Kilroy. Kilroy would also like to know how come a Scotland Yard man is pushing the queer. Pushing the what? Queer. American uh, for passing counterfeit money. Oh, it's elementary, my dear Tony. Here, try the spinach. No, thank you. If I wanted the Coast Guard, I'd drown. If I wanted homicide, I'd get murdered. Since I wanted the Treasury Department to contact me, I simply, as you put it, pushed the queer. Since when is Scotland Yard so concerned with uh, counterfeit American currency? Well, these same counterfeiters are also printing English five-pound notes. How do you know they're the same? Well, it's obvious that the plates were engraved by the same craftsman. And furthermore, they're being sold to distributors abroad by the same man. One of your countrymen, Tony chap called Philip Drake. I trailed him here from Europe and then I, I ran into a little trouble. So I noticed. Well, it looks like we're on this case together. I'm following a hot clue now, which might lead to this fellow Drake. Yeah? Too bad you can't come along, Jeff. Hey, wait a minute. Who says I can't come along? Remember, we don't want a pinch. Just want to put a tail on whoever passes the phony dough. I understand. The clerks have orders to signal us and then stall the person. Louie? What do you like in this one? Oh, I ain't pork. Why not? Oh, cause you just do like you always do. You top me off. Listen, Louie, whatever I do, I do for your own good. When you're in trouble, who do you come to? You, Frankie. When you need advice, who do you ask? You. When you were sick, who took care of you? You, Frankie. In other words, I've been just like a mother to you. 
Yeah, but there's just one thing I'd like to know. Why is it every time we make a bet, you always want to bet with my money? Huh? Well, because when we lose, I don't feel so bad. Oh. Now, uh, what do you like? Yeah, blue boy. Ain't got a chance. But, Frankie, listen, I, I told you, I got a hot tip on Blue Boy. The, the guy that gave me this tip, he, he said he could talk to horses. Oh, so he talks to horses, huh? Well, what I'd like to know is, does he get any answers? Well, I should. Oh, I don't know. Okay, then. Then I won't. The horses are now entering the starting Smart. Day. Boys are dark. Finkel by that Harry T a second mile length, Bell Davis third on the rail mile length and a half loose is fourth and blue boy. So he talks to horses. As a nearing the far turn is Finkel on the rail by ahead, Bell Davis second by half length, Harry T is third by net, loose is fourth by two and a half length and blue boy. Always listening. Coming into the stretch is Finkel by a net, Harry T second by a nose, Bell Davis third by a nose, and blue boy on the outside is coming up fast. It's Harry T by a length, blue boy second, Finkel third. Now Pico on the rail goes to the lead. Blue Boy is still second. It's Pico and Blue Boy. It's Blue Boy and Pico. It's Blue Boy going away. Blue Boy is going steadily. It's Blue Boy by half a length. Pico is second by a length. And Bell Davis third. It's Blue Boy by two lengths. They're coming down the line of finish. And it's Blue Boy, the winner by three lengths. Pico is second. Bell Davis third. Blue Boy! The results of the race are now official. What do you know? Uh, the race was fixed. It's an optical delusion. They all slowed down to a walk to let Blue Boy win. Your attention, please. Blue Boy just set a new track record for the six furlongs. He is, Frankie. He, he must have run pretty fast. Ah, now watch this was fixed. Uh, what do you got in the next? Oh, I ain't gonna tell you. All right, if I all right. Don't tell me. Keep it a secret. But I'll tell you something. You can beat a race, but you can't beat the race. Oh, but I can, Frankie. Uh, uh, I got a new system. I can't lose. Famous last words. I can't lose. Uh, but I can. Oh, uh, you don't know my new system. I only bet counterfeit money. Counterfeit? Yeah. What you get? Yeah. Oh, I ain't talking. Look, come on, come on, let me in on it. Oh, yeah, if I tell you that Drake, he's gonna be mad. Oh, Drake, huh? I wonder what you guys were up to. Come on, let me see it. Okay. You see? Now what do you think of my new system? Louis, Louis, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. We can bet every horse in the race. We can't lose. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. That guy that says he can talk to horses, he, he told me to bet on Firefly. You know, Jeff, I think you and I are in the wrong business. We ought to buy ourselves a racetrack. Huh. Yeah, with our combined salaries, we could make a down payment in about... 500 years. There you are. Uh, number seven. It's the $100 window. I, I said I wanted number seven. I'm sorry, sir, but I distinctly heard you say number six. Uh, no, I, I don't want number six. I, I want number seven. Firefly. You know, you can't change your mind after I punch the ticket. Hey, this don't smell good. He's stolen, Louie. Come on, let's get out of here. Come on. Here's the money. Hang on to that. Where is he? He got away. I tried to stall him, but I couldn't hold him. What did he look like? Oh, he was a huge fellow. Well over six foot, had uh, bags under his eyes, wore a battered felt hat and a brown suit with a stripe on it. There's a little guy with him. Yeah, the big guy, Louie. Let's go. Never find him in this crowd.
Saving this. Say, Tony, can you trace this telephone number? Certainly. Is it an official business? I suppose it isn't. <laughs> but you'll have to have a friend. <laughs> Come on, I'll get her address. Hollywood, 41460. Hmm. Margot. I suppose you'll be leaving again soon. Uh-huh. I hate to see you go, Phil. I'm always so worried about you when you're gone. Every time I think about it, I get mad. Why? Well, you take all the chances. What do you get out of it? Oh, you're looking at it the wrong way, honey. I'm making plenty. What about the man who has the plates? He gets the lion's share. Well, he's in the driver's seat. That's where you belong. Take it easy. After all, 20% of the take's not bad. 80%'s much better. If I knew who had those plates, I'd get them from him, but fast. Anything else? No, that's all. Keep the chain. Oh, thank you. You like Mexican music? Love it. I'll let you in on a little secret. We're going down to Mexico soon. I got all the arrangements made except one. A matter of picking up that little something that puts me in the driver's seat. You mean the plates? Honey, I didn't need you to tell me that 80 percent's a lot bigger than 20. Forget the arithmetic. Where do I fit into this? It's up to you, baby. We interrupt this program for an important news flash. The local office of the United States Treasury Department warns the public to be on the lookout for counterfeit $20 bills. These can be identified by the serial number which they all bear, L290839. That's L290839. Broadcast got me buffaloed. Maybe that mysterious boss of yours. Not a chance. He's too careful. Say, that Englishman. Piccadilly, Jeff? Oh, no. Louie took it away from him. Not all of it. Wait a minute. I forgot to take it away from Louie. He's probably been passing that door all over town. Right hotel. Let me talk to Louie Struber. Can you answer that? I'm in a hurry. Oh, yeah. Hello. What have you been doing all day? Oh, I I've been off to races. That uh, dough you took away from the Englishman. What did you do with it? Nothing. You better have it on the horses? Uh-uh. You sure? Yeah. They wouldn't take none of it. But I was out to races yesterday. And you stupid fool. How many times do I have to tell you something to get it through that thick skull of yours? You must brain idiot. Hey. Ain't nobody gonna talk to me like that. Not nobody. I talk that way to you. Now, you stay in that hotel room and don't budge out of there until you hear from me. You'll have to watch Louie now. He's liable to cause you some trouble. Dumb apes ruined my whole plan. That's what I get for being soft. Stops a bullet for me once and I... Well, I gotta move quick before Carter does. You, Margot, dear. Well, what do you want? How can you be so cruel? How can you talk to me like that? The tone of your voice, the, the way you look at me. I want to lead my own life. Stop hounding me. Why did you run away from me? One little quarrel, and you forget all the years of happiness we had. I, I can't understand you, Margot. That's just the trouble. You never will understand me. I told you when I left I was never coming back. That still goes. It's incredible how you've changed these last few months. I like the way I am. Can you imagine what you may be like in a few years, associating with that cheap hoodlum? Careful, Norman. You're hurting my feelings. Why don't you leave her alone? Get out of her life. I don't want him to get out of my life. I love him. Love him? How can you? Everything he stands for is built on hate and brutality. Don't you see, Margot? He'll drag you down with him in misery and disgrace. Just like the rest of that rotten Malloy gang. All right, cut the sermon. You have a lot of character, aren't you? Maybe he's right, Margot. He's got a lot to offer. Why don't you go with him? 
It's now or never, Margot, and I won't ask you again. I'm staying here. Goodbye, Dad. Father, weren't you? Was I? Yeah. I've been wondering where I stood with you. Now I guess I know. Phil, it's been that way ever since you first came to our house, ten years ago. You were just a kid then. I think that's why we moved away from New York. I don't know why Dad was so scared, though. You never paid any attention to me. Oh, yes, I did. I put you down for future reference. <laughs> you were just lucky I ran into you before I went to Europe. Lucky? I planned it. I'll never understand women. Love me, huh? Of course I do, Phil. All right. I'm going over to my hotel and check out. Pack your bags, baby. I'll be back in about two hours. What are you going to do? I'm going to climb up on that driver's seat. Hurry back, darling. How do you like that? She's really crazy about that heel. Hello? Louie, this is Margo. I think it's terrible the way Phil spoke to you. He hasn't any right to talk to you like that. Yeah. Who does he think he is giving me orders? Telling me to lay low here in this here room. You know why I told you that, Louie? He's afraid of you. But you're so big and strong, and if you found out what he was up to now, you'd stop him. I hate to say this, Louie, but Phil is going to double-cross you. Lovely girl. Louie, Phil's on his way to Carter's this very minute. He's going to grab the counterfeit plates and leave the country, leaving you high and dry. That's the right attitude. You can't let him get away with it. Good idea. I'll meet you there. Oh, I forgot Carter's street number. Oh, that's uh, 4057. Oh, what's the best way oh, for me to get there from my apartment? Well, you, you just go up Los Feliz till you come to Edgemont. Then you turn to your left. It's about two blocks up. Goodbye, Louie. <laughs> Goodbye, Margo. So he thinks he's going to get away with them plates. Well, I'll fix him. Plates? What plates? The stuff they make the money out of. Hey, wait a minute. He can't do that to us? No. Oh, us? Well, Frankie, you ain't in on this. Oh, now, wait a minute, boy. Remember, we're partners. Know what that means? That means we stick together. Through thick and thin. Through sickness and health, and pleasure, and in danger. Yeah, that bad Drake, he's kind of a tough guy. There's liable to be some shooting. So there'll be a little shooting. Wait a minute. Shooting. With real bullets? Yeah. Come on, we gotta hurry. Margo says we no, gotta... No, Louie, I, I just remembered I... I gotta be at the club in a half an hour. Why, well, ain't you going with me? Oh, sure. I'm going with you. In spirit. Oh, that's different. Now, hurry. With real bullets. Who are you and what do you want? Sorry, lady. You're under arrest. For what? Suspected of counterfeiting. Counterfeiting? I never heard of anything so ridiculous in my life. Have you a warrant? Come on, quick, let's get out of here. Are you hurt, Dan? No. Well, that ought to set Piccadilly Jeff in pretty solid. Come on, let's go. You took an awful chance, Jeff. That was a federal man you been. A federal man? Sounds. You're not afraid of anything, are you? I'm scared to death of beautiful blondes. What? And you're a big, strong man? I'm weak when it comes to blondes. And brunettes. And redheads. And, and girls. By the way, I hope you're not in the habit of handing these out too promiscuously. Are there any more floating around? What do you think? Frankly, I don't know what to think. And another thing, why did you save my life? For business or personal reasons? 
could be both. I admire a woman who would mix business with pleasure. Jeff, I like your style. I like the way you talk and do things. You know, you and I could go places together. Well, you're in the driver's seat. Now, where can I drop you off? No, but I thought you were going Oh, I have an appointment. Tell me, where can I meet you later? Pull over to the side. Well, of all the nerves. I said, pull over. Now, look, I didn't travel 6,000 miles to be pushed around, especially by a woman. I'm not trying to push you around, Jeff. I like you too much for that. Far too much. You are an affectionate little thing, aren't you? You like a lot of people. What are you insinuating? Drake, for instance. <laughs> I think you're jealous. Well, you needn't be. I put you in a special category. Well, you'll pardon me if I'm a trifle skeptical. Of course, I'd like to believe you, Margot, and I couldn't be wrong. Perhaps you do mean the double. Wow, you are convincing. Maybe I really did mean it. Please give me the keys now. Well, surely we're not going to go after that. Yes, we're going places. There you are. Okay. So there's nothing to worry about. All right, the feds have got a few of the bills. But they haven't the faintest idea where they came from. So there's nothing to worry about. The whole thing wouldn't have happened in the first place if... Well, I just forgot to take stuff away from Lloyd. So you just forgot? Yeah, just a little mistake. Drake, in a business like this, you're allowed only one mistake. You filled your quota, I filled mine. I, uh... I don't quite follow you. Your mistake was in trusting Louie. My mistake was trusting you. Now, just a minute. Don't forget, you and I uh, have a little agreement. An agreement which you have violated. You were to distribute that money in Europe and only in Europe. But you were so stupid, you didn't realize the importance of such a policy. The only stupid thing I ever did was selling you those plates. Drake, stop complaining. You got what you asked for, didn't you? Yeah. I was on a lamb, needed money. You gave me peanuts. I gave you $10,000 for them. And Drake, my boy, $10,000 is not peanuts. An hour's work with those plates. You'd have made a million if you hadn't been so chicken. No, just cautious, that's all. You know, there's some brilliant men working for the Treasury Department. They're the ones I'm afraid of. They're not so smart. I think differently. That's why I waited until after the war was over before I started printing that money. For foreign consumption. Years of planning destroyed by your stupidity. So? I've waited seven years. I can afford to wait seven more. Well, I can't. Now, maybe I'd better tell you something about my plan. I have the plates. I'll make the plans. I've decided to go into temporary retirement. Correction. Permanent retirement. What's the meaning of this intrusion? Who are you? Just one of those brilliant men from the Treasury Department. Put up your hands, Carter. All right, back it up. You two. You're both under arrest for suspicion of counterfeiting. May I ask, how did you get here? I came with Drake. You're lying. You asked me to wait, but I got kind of lonesome. Speaking. Let me talk to Dan. Nice work, Lloyd. Oh, that wasn't nothing. Hey, did you get them plates? Did you get them plates? No, not yet. Oh, where are they? You heard what the man said. Put that gun away and stop being melodramatic. Give me those plates or I'll drill you. What good would that do? You still wouldn't have the plates. If you'd stop and think, he's your problem. You're right. I'll take care of him, and Louie will take care of you. Where are they? Take it easy, Louie. Just make him talk. Where are they?
how things were going to turn out, I wouldn't have called Louie. Well, if we get there in time, there's no harm done.
big idea. What are you talking about? Don't give me that. Whose team are you playing on? How far do you think those baby blue eyes will take you? I ought to smack them. Phil, I did it for your sake. I didn't want a murder rap hanging over your head. Another thing. What were you doing there with that Englishman? Oh, Piccadilly Jeff? Yeah, Piccadilly Jeff. Well, right after you left, there was a knock at the door. I thought it was you coming back, so I opened it and he practically forced his way in. What do you have to say? Oh, nothing much. He, he asked a lot of questions, but he let it slip that he was going to Carter's. So I thought I'd better tag along to protect our interests. I'm glad you said our. Don't forget that. So it was probably Drake or the guy that slugged me. Give me homicide. All right, drive to the Murata Hotel, quick. I gotta go. Bill Gray, open up. Where's Louis? I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. I don't remember giving you permission to search my room. You have my permission. I'm glad you came over. Louis has been telling me all about your new racket. Sweet deal. Easy money. Just what I'm cut out for. I'm wasting my talents in those, those cheap hard trucks. I'm a born gangster. I got brains, personality, and no character. And I'm tough. Plenty tough. Shut up. So you want to be a gangster, huh? Yeah. All right. Now listen. When Louie comes here, tell him he's hot. Tell him the feds are looking for him. Tell him to meet me at Margot's house. Not the apartment, to the house. Immediately, understand? Yes, sir. We found his prints at Carter's. Why, that's Drake, Philip Drake. He has a list of aliases a mile long. And his were on the painting. Oh, that's Louis, Louis Struba. And he has a list of aliases two miles long. Homicide's putting out a dragnet for both of them. They staked out the girl's apartment, but I doubt if they'll go back there. Well, we haven't any line on Drake, so our best bet's to locate Louis. Well, how about the record? They telephoned him. Get the acetates. We'll check that telephone number. Hello, Barney. Hiya, Barney. Sorry to rustle you out of bed. Well, that's all right, Dan. I don't mind. But my wife does. Mm -hmm. Here's all the stuff on Carter. Dudley M. Oh, Barney, this is Inspector McAllister, Scotland Yard. Meet Mr. Barnett. Where's the internal revenue? How do you do? Glad to meet you, Inspector. Want me to stick around and help you decipher that stuff, Dan? No, thanks, Barney. Go on back to bed. On behalf of my wife, I thank you. Good night, boys. Good night. Good night. I forgot to take it away from Lloyd. That's it, Tony. Right. Look, Dan. Among other things, he was the owner of the California Art Supply Company and the Mercy Food Package outfit. Sounds like an ideal setup. Through the Art Supply Company, he could buy special ink and paper. And export the counterfeit money in the Mercy Food Packages. Just imagine, Dan, all those cans labeled ham, coffee, soup, but loaded with funny sugar. Quiet, I can't hear the clicks. Now listen. Wait a minute. I forgot to take it away from Lloyd. Slow it down to 33 and a third RPM. Sounds like he's got a cold. Here it comes now. I got it this time. You and me in Margot's house. Not an apartment, you understand? Her house! Gee, you ain't mad, are you, Frankie? No. No. Where you been? Oh, I've been to the post office. What for? Oh, I, I just done something clever. How would you know if it's clever? Oh, cause. I, I, I seen it right here in Dick Tracy's column. Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy. 
Listen, we're in a place. Oh, I ain't talking. I know, I know. Where are they? Oh, I hit them. Mr. Pace, get the corner. Come on, come on, get the corner. You're going to be picked up and take for you. Get on. Hello, Louie. Who's the creep? Oh, that's Piccadilly Joe or something. Piccadilly Jeff, if you don't mind. Can I talk freely in front of this uh, gentleman? Hey, go on, Frankie, beat it. Here, beat it, I say. Wait a minute, I live here. Yeah. Well, what do you want? Look, Louie, tonight you acquired some valuable merchandise, didn't you? Oh, you mean the place? So the last time you tried to muscle in, look, why you... Louie, look. Without me, your plates are completely worthless. What? Did you ever take a good look at them? One is larger than the other. Oh, that ain't true. One of them is smaller than the other. Wait a minute. Look, Chloe. The front and the back of a 20 got to be the same size. Precisely. One is for the front of a $20 bill, but the other is for the front of an English bank note. How do you know so much? Because I have the back plates for both of them. Ah, then we can do business. Fine. Produce your plates, and I'll trade you the back of the $20 bill for the front of the English bank note. It's a deal. Oh, no, Dad. I, I don't like him. Wait a minute, Louie, look. Don't be obstreperous. This way we got nothing. If we make a deal, think of the things you can buy for Margo. Yeah, Margo. Oh. Now I remember why I don't like him. He was kissing her. But anybody can kiss Margo. Yeah, anybody but me. Well, did you ever take a good look at yourself in the mirror? Hey, wait a minute. He ain't that ugly. He certainly oh, is. Oh, I... He's turning red. He's turning blue. Cut it out. Cut it out. They'll hang it. You're under arrest on suspicion of murder. Huh? Better take him along, too. On what charge? Disturbing the peace until we check your records. What'd you do with the plates, Louis? Oh, I ain't talking. Nothing on him, Mr. Richards. Okay, take him along. Uh, No one but a moron would wear a tie like this. That's the one Louie gave me. That Piccadilly Jeff, quite a character. Yeah, he's a character, all right. You'd never pick him to be a Scotland Yard man. You'd never pick him for a Scotland Yard man. He's one of their best. Take me, for instance. No one would ever pick me for a tea man. I did, and I'm beginning to regret it. <laughs> I'm just saying that because it's true. tell you how glad I am to see you. Oh, uh, that'll be all for tonight, Caroline. Same time tomorrow, Mr. Talbot? I'll telephone you. Good night, Mr. Talbot. Good night. Dad, I'll have to stay here a few days. Why, certainly, my dear, of course. And so will Phil. I won't have that man in this house. All right. But if I leave, she goes with me. Then get out. Both of you. Very well, Dad. Oh, I just want you to know if the police come looking for me. Police? Why do you ruin everything you come in contact with? You Oh, shut up. You forget the police want you, too. Of course, they don't know it yet. Come on, baby, let's go. Sorry, that's the way it is. Wait. 
All right. You can both stay. Not obliged. Hi, Jailbird. Hi, Copper. Spend a comfortable night? I was miserable. Louis snores. Did he talk? Only in his sleep. It was extremely uninteresting. Then you went through this phony pinch for nothing. It seems so. Well, thanks for bailing me out. Don't thank us. We didn't spring you. Someone else stood your bond. Yeah? A blonde. Not Margot. Yeah. She's parked around the corner waiting for you. Got a lot of courage coming here. Courage, my eyes. She's up to something. Probably Drake's behind it. That's right. With Louis in jail, Drake can't get at him for the plates. Suppose we make it possible for the two of them to get together. Drake hasn't got the nerve to come here. Oh, you misunderstand me. Drake had me released through Margot. It's our duty to return the compliment by springing Louis through me. You mean use Louis for bait? Has possibilities. With luck, we might snag Drake and the plates. What's the strategy? Well, with your cooperation and unwittingly Drake's, this is what we might do. You always do. A cigarette? Is it loaded? Thank you. I'll try my pipe. Oh, I don't blame you for thinking, but I saw Phil out the corner of my eye, and I had to do something, or he'd have killed both of us. Drive me to the nearest psychiatrist. First you save my life, then you double cross me. Then we make a deal and seal it with a kiss, and you double cross me again. Now tell me, why did you bail me out? You must have had a good reason. Pure impulse. I really wanted Louie, but they wouldn't release him, so I took you. Yeah, that's quite a compliment. Where are we going? To the airport. Now what are you up to? You don't trust me. I certainly don't. Oh, Jeff, for your own sake, please go back to England. You're smart enough to know you can't beat the law. You could be successful in legitimate business. Would you give it a try, Jeff? If you need some money, I have a little and... Well, God, that's one of the kind of you, but... You know, it's quite difficult to get back on the straight and narrow once you're off it. Do you think you could reform? Oh, well, I... Here, watch the road. Now, you see what I mean? I know I'm not going back to England empty-handed. I want the plates for the five-pound note. Plates? There's only one. There's no printing on the back. That's true, but how did you know? Oh, everyone knows. No, they don't. Frankie and Louie didn't. Poor Louie. Did you see him in jail? Uh-huh. Did you have a chance to talk to him? Sure. What about? Oh, philosophical problems. One world or none, the atomic age, you know, all that sort of thing. But Louie? I give up. I suppose we stop fencing you, come right out and ask me whether I found out anything about the plate. Well, did you? Yes, and no. You're exasperating. I'll tell you what, take me to Drake and I'll tell you both what I do know. All right, I'll arrange for you to meet him. It's a deal. You know, the trouble with you is you always want to cut yourself in when you've got nothing to offer. What do you think this is, amateur night in Dixon? I lost my amateur standing long ago. I expect to be well paid. You can't get those plates away from Louis. No, that's up to you. I can get Louis away from the cops. He's up for murder. That charge was dropped. Carter died from heart failure. Keep talking. And Louis is being transferred to federal prison tomorrow afternoon. Why the feds? Counterfeiting? Mm-hmm. You'll wind up in Alcatraz. Now, if you agree to my terms, I'll show you how we can spring Louis. What do you want? The plate to the five pound note. Okay, you're on. Well, I can't do it alone. I'll need an ambulance and a couple of men. An ambulance? Yeah. Come here, Jerry. You know where we can get an ambulance? Sure, who's sick? Nobody, yeah. Get all the meat wagons you want. You'll only need one. A tank full of gas. How about manpower? Jerry and I'll be with you. When are they moving you? Tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. All right, you stick with Jerry, Jerry. I'll uh, phone you at his place tomorrow. Okay. So long. Good luck, Jeff. Well, 
Colorado Hotel. Let me talk to Frankie Dodge. Hello. Hello, Frankie. This is Drake. Did you find those plates? Drake, I've been wanting to talk to you, only I, I didn't know your phone number. The cops grabbed Louis the night before last. Yeah, yeah, I know that, but did he say anything about the plates? And they arrested that, that Englishman, that, that Piccadilly Jeff. Tell me something I don't know. Okay, I will. Piccadilly Jeff is a Scotland Yard man. Scotland Yard? How do you know? I heard the coppers say so. Hey, I'm a lot of help to you, ain't it, Phil? I can help you in lots of ways. Yeah. Yeah, you sure can, Frankie, yeah. Look, you know Jerry McGee, don't you? Oh, yeah. All right, beat it on over to his place right away. Tell him I can't go with him. You're taking my place. This package came for Louie yesterday. I've been holding it. Where do you want me to send it to him? In jail? <laughs> Shut up! I didn't mean you. Piccadilly Jeff will be with Jerry. Don't let on your noise from Scotland Yard. Now beat it all over there right away. Oh, yeah, but uh, isn't there someone else? Quit yakking and get going. Okay. Well, this is it, baby. This time next week, we'll be taking it easy on the beach at Acapulco. Acapulco? Yeah. I chartered the sweetest little yacht you ever saw. Now, look, this is where she's docked. Get down there and tell the captain to be ready to shove off this afternoon as soon as I get there. What's the matter, baby? Aren't you happy? Oh, yes, but it leaves me kind of breathless. Well, that's the way life is with me, baby. Now, come on, get going. I'll take your car, you call a cab. Where are you going? I'm going to see a man about an ambulance. There's a cab waiting for you. Yes, I'm leaving. I wish you wouldn't. We haven't been welcome here anyway. But running away won't do you any good. Police will find you no matter where you are. At least you're safe here for a while until we can figure something out. 25 to 4, we better be gone. Remember, if Drake's there, I give the signal, we all close in. And if he isn't? Then we play pigeon. And let him take Louie. That's right. But we follow the ambulance and make sure the police keep far enough behind so they won't know they're being tagged. All right, Piper, let's get Louie. All right. I'll never forget that summer at Cape Cod. You were only five years old then. I had worked for months painting a seascape. And at last I finished it. And I was very proud of it. I thought it was the best thing I had ever done. And that night I went into the kitchen to prepare your dinner. And you smudged it all over with your little hands. But I didn't get angry. I loved you so much. I thought it was wonderful. And I still feel the same way about you. You may be in trouble. But to me, you're still wonderful. Goodbye, Dad. The number of the United States Treasury Department, Secret Service Division. I need a gun for. Oh, when I move in, I want you to cover me. Oh. Jerry, you better give me yours. Yeah. I 
right, get in the ambulance. Get out, you. Where are you heading? No place. Don't give me any of that. You're under arrest for aiding the escape of a federal prisoner. Oh, I didn't do nothing wrong. Honest, I didn't. Look, a guy came to the place and rented two ambulances. He gave me a hundred bucks to drive one of them to a certain place at a certain time. What's wrong with that? All right, take him along, boys. Hold him for investigation. Piper, let you and I double back to see if we can pick up that other ambulance. Slow down, Jerry. There's no time to get pinched for speeding. Go on down to Balboa. Don't worry, Jeff. There's no one following us. I so I noticed. That was a clever trick you pulled. Credit's all yours. Still don't see why you had to use an ambulance, though. Purely psychological. Threw them off guard just long enough. Just long enough to spring lawyer. Yeah, but that other ambulance of yours was sensational. What gave you that idea? <laughs> I'd like to be there to see those coppers' faces when they catch on. <laughs> and so would I. <laughs> Calling car 92. Calling car 92. 92, Richards. Proceed immediately to the foot of Moore Street, Pier 30, Balboa. Taggart will meet you there. Urgent. Got it. Let's go, Piper. Uh, Frankie, light me a cigarette, will you? Yeah. Oh, oh I forgot. Here's a package came for you. Oh, uh, I don't want it. What do you mean you don't want it? It's for you. Oh, I don't want to put it away. Look. Huh. To Louis Struber. From Louis Struber. What you doing sending yourself presents? It's not Christmas. Well, I guess that completes my part of the bargain. No, I I'll think... settle with you, Jeff, as soon as I pick up my plate. May I see them? Sure. Look out, Jerry! <laughs> Hey, what's the matter? You're blowing your top. Can't ride it the next one. Where are we going? 
Oh, we're going to take a nice long boat ride. You'll like it. It's a beautiful boat. Oh, no. I can't. i I got to be at the club. Relax. You know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to buy you the biggest nightclub in Mexico. Now, look, when we get on the boat, uh, we cover Louis' handcuffs up. We want to look respectable. What about him? Your drunk friend? We'll have to carry him aboard. gonna do with him? Give you one guess. Hey, you're in the wrong room, ain't your sister? Oh, I was just getting acquainted with the boat. I think I'll go up on deck. Good idea. Anything wrong, sir? Oh, uh, no, Captain. You know, I've been looking forward to this trip for a long time. It's wonderful to get away from everything and everybody. Boy, oh boy, Louie, this is the life, ain't it? The wide open sea, can't you see it? We're up on deck. I'm on watch. We're going round and over and up. Look at the typhoon. The typhoon's coming at us. Blowing in our faces. I'm trying to keep control of the boat. We're going up and down, back and forth, up. Come in. Oh, oh, it's you, Margo. I was afraid it might be the captain. Drake wants him to think we're respectable. Hello. Oh, I think Louie can fool him once I get these handcuffs off. Boy, this is a setup, huh? What a life. Fellows are sucking to be born poor. Hello, Margo. You know that? That Drake's a swelling. You know what he's gonna do for me? He's gonna get me one of the swankiest nightclubs in Mexico. And you fell for that? Listen to me, both of you. You'll never get to Mexico alive. Don't forget, Louie. Drake tried to double-cross you before. Remember, he went to Carter's without you to get the plates? Yeah. He had this boat all set to make a getaway, but he couldn't leave without all the plates. Now he has them, and he has you, too. I'll kill him. That's what I'll do. I'll kill him. I'll break his neck. He never intended to split with you. He told me so. And Frankie, he said you know too much. What's he gonna do? Probably throw you both overboard. Oh. Margo! Margo! Don't do nothing to me. Look, please, just put me on land. I won't talk. I don't know nothing anyway. Please, please, I can't swim. Don't throw me overboard. Who said I would? Margo. She was just here and she said... Shut up! Margo, huh? Lloyd, did Margo tell you to go to Carter's the other night? Yeah, yeah, sure she did. She called him. Stay here, Jack. Where are you going, Jeff? Up on deck to get a little fresh air. Oh, you and I have a little unfinished business. Would you mind stepping in the stateroom? No, not at all.
when I make a deal, I'd like to see that everyone gets what's coming to him. My deal with you, Jeff, called for you to get the plate for the five pound note. With my compliments. Mm, thank you. Margo, here's a little wedding present for you. I know you've wanted those for a long time. The plates for the $20 bill. You surprised me, Drake. Oh, life's full of surprises, Inspector. Inspector? Scotland Yard. You know, Margo, this puts us in an awful spot. As long as he's alive, we're not safe. He probably knows your father engraved those plates. And if we let him go, it means prison for your father. And for me, too. I don't know what to do, Margo. What do you suggest? Well, you know how I feel about you, Phil. I, I don't even have to stop and think. Well, I know how you feel about me. Hold it! I gotta hand it to you, Margo. You had me fooled for a while. I should have known all you wanted was those plates to destroy them so they couldn't put anything on your father. Now that puts you both right on the spot. Oh, come now, Drake, you can't mean that. With you and me, it's different. You're on one side of the law and I'm on the other. We know where we stand. With her, it's something... You make it sound like a game. I play for keeps. Drop that gun or I'll drop these plates. Don't fire, Phil, I mean it. You're a good kid, Margot, but your father had the right idea. He helped us, and we'll do our best to help him. How did you get here, Fly? No, we walked. Why, well, we're right back where we started. That's right. We had the Coast Guard radio the ship to return to port. Oh, clever, these team men, aren't they? Move on. Let's don't overdo this. Sir, I'm a liberty-loving American, and I demand my rights. There. You got them. Well, you don't understand. I'm on my way to Mexico to open up a nightclub. Open one in Alcatraz. They're starved for entertainment there. Oh, yeah? That's a good idea. Thanks. Thanks very much. Darling, every time I kiss you, I lose you. This time, I'm not taking any chances.